Hi, Dr. Dave and Sam Dieppe here again with another Top 10 video. This time we're here to help you improve your draw shot. Many of our students struggle with this important but elusive skill. But we're confident the tips in this video will help you be more successful. A draw shot is where you hit low on the cue ball to impart bottom spin to make the cue ball come back after hitting the object ball. Most of the advice in this video actually applies to all types of shots, not just draw shots. Draw shots just require a lower tip position and usually more cue speed. They are also much less forgiving and demand more accuracy than other types of shots. The first important piece of advice is to chalk the tip properly. Don't just carelessly use your bridge hand to chalk. And don't drill a hole into the chalk. And definitely don't rotate the chalk around like this. This dirties and damages the ferrule. These techniques waste chalk, get chalk dust everywhere, and get your bridge hand dirty. Instead, hold the cue at an angle so the tip is lower. Carefully apply chalk to the edges of the tip where it is needed, using a swiping motion as you rotate the cue. And check the tip visually during and after chalking to make sure the tip surface is covered completely. It should look like this, and not this. As you can see, with the recommended technique, the chalk will wear down more uniformly with shallow grooves instead of a deep center hole. To get good draw, you must hit low on the cue ball. A standard striped ball can be used to visualize how low you can go without miscuing. The tip contact point can be as low as the edge of the stripe. Look how much you can lower the tip to apply backspin. The width of a standard ball stripe is half the ball's diameter, which corresponds to the size of the miscue limit circle. A good way to test if the stripe width is the standard size is to freeze three balls in a triangle like this. If the stripe width is half the ball diameter, the stripe edges will align. Balls with large numbers in the stripe will usually have a stripe width wider than the standard size, so be aware of this. It is very important to carefully check both the tip position and aim with the cue still and with the tip close to the cue ball in your set position. Also return the tip close to the cue ball after each of your warm up strokes so you can easily verify accurate placement. It is also good practice to verify the tip contact point and aim again with the cue still before your final stroke. It helps to have a deliberate and consistent eye pattern during your pre-shot routine. Notice how Sam focuses on the object ball target as she brings the cue down into place. She checks both the aim and tip contact point with the cue still by slowly moving the eyes back and forth. She is focused on the cue ball during the warm-up strokes to make sure she doesn't hit the cue ball by mistake and to ensure the cue remains straight with the desired tip contact point. She again holds the cue still to re-verify the aim and tip contact point. She then locks her laser focus on the object ball target before the final stroke delivery. Here it is again, uninterrupted. You don't need to do everything exactly like Sam does, but be deliberate, careful, focused, and consistent. See the resource pages linked in the video description for more information and advice. Make sure you don't elevate the back of the cue more than you need to. If you lower and collapse your bridge hand and lengthen your bridge distance, it is much easier to get the cue more level. You can get good draw with an elevated cue, assuming the cue ball doesn't hop very much. But with the cue more level, your draw shots will be more accurate and more effective. Do you see how close the cue is to the rail at cue ball address? Despite what old school books, players, and instructors might say, an open bridge has many advantages over a closed bridge. And this applies to draw shots too. See the links in the video description for more information. Be very careful to not rush your warm up and final stroke like this. It does not help to pull the cue back fast. In fact, it can only hurt by causing unwanted body motion that can push the cue offline. Instead, pull the cue back slowly on your final stroke, like this. And don't rush the transition between the back and forward strokes. For some people, it helps to add a distinct and deliberate pause like this. 
If you have trouble with jerking and rushing the transition, it can be helpful to add a deliberate pause. If you pause, there is no way you can jerk the transition. If your bridge length is short, not only is it difficult to get the tip low without elevating the back of the cue, you also need to punch the stroke to get more speed. If you use a longer bridge length, you will have more distance to accelerate smoothly to generate more speed. This will help make your stroke more accurate and consistent. Notice how close the cue is to the rail at cue ball address to get the cue as level as possible. Also notice that the forearm is perpendicular to the cue at cue ball address. This helps ensure an accurate tip contact point and helps with speed control. Again, notice the smooth back to forward transition and the smooth acceleration into the ball. When you don't need as much draw distance, you can use a shorter stroke with the same low tip position. If you have trouble using a shorter stroke with the same long bridge length, an option is to shorten the bridge length to force the shorter stroke, like this. One disadvantage of this approach is the back of the cue will need to be elevated more to get the same low tip position. Another way to control draw amount is to vary the tip height. Obviously, with a higher tip, you get less draw. Generally, a lower tip and slower speed will offer more control. Except with a controlled stun back shot. It is very important to keep your grip relaxed during the entire stroke. If you tighten your grip during the shot, the tip will hit the cue ball lower than you think. Watch the tip go down when Sam tightens her grip. That's because the back of the cue is going up. You also want to be careful to keep your wrist relaxed. If you flex your wrist during the stroke, the cue will not stay online. This is what typically happens when you tighten your grip during a draw shot. Again, the tip hits lower than expected. You also don't want to have too much of a gap or slop in your grip. If you tighten a sloppy grip by mistake, the cue really moves a lot. Here's an example of too much slop. Here, the gap is smaller, but this slop can only cause problems, especially if you change grip pressure during your stroke. This is ideal, with no gap or slop, but also no grip pressure or tightness. You don't want to grip the cue tightly like this. With an overly tight grip, you will not be able to have a relaxed and smoothly accelerating stroke. A good rule of thumb to gauge grip pressure is if you can support the cue in the air with just your grip hand, it is much too tight. With a relaxed grip, you need the bridge hand or the table to support the weight of the cue. Again, your grip should be closed with no gap or slop, but there should be no gripping tension or pressure. Even worse than tightening just your grip during the stroke is tightening your entire arm. If you do this, the entire cue will lift up during the stroke. If this happens during a draw shot with an open bridge, you won't get much, if any, draw on the ball since the tip will hit the cue ball higher than expected. When your grip is relaxed, the cue should easily pivot in the grip hand during the stroke like this. If your grip is too tight, the wrist will flex back and forth like this, and it will be very difficult to stroke smoothly, accurately, and consistently. And remember, you also want to keep your wrist quiet and relaxed during the stroke. If you flex your wrist, the cue will not stay straight. Another important tip, especially for draw shots, is to keep your head and body as still as possible during and after the stroke. Don't lift up and turn your head to watch the object ball like this. And don't lift your body up on the shot either. Be a relaxed statue during and after the shot. Another key to Q-tip contact point accuracy, especially with draw shots, is to keep the elbow still during the stroke into the ball. If you want to practice this, you can have a friend lightly place fingers around your elbow while you stroke back and forth. If you drop your elbow, it will be clear to both you and your friend. Your friend can also hold your upper arm and shoulder while you stroke to remind you that these should be still to keep the elbow from dropping. Another clue of a dropping elbow is banging the cue into the rail. Again, keep your elbow still during the stroke into the ball to be accurate with the tip contact point. 
If you drop your elbow, you will not hit the cue ball where you expect, and you won't get as much or any draw. It is actually okay to drop the elbow if you can drop it straight, and if you drop it mostly after the hit. I got good draw on that shot since most of the elbow drop occurred after the hit. One problem with elbow drop for some people is that other bad things sometimes come with it, like wrist turn. Or they also chicken wing the elbow out as the elbow goes down. Here's an exaggerated example. Another important thing about the elbow is that it should be straight up with the forearm vertical. You should not have the elbow chicken winged out, and you should not have it tucked in. When the forearm is not vertical, the cue will usually not move in a straight line during the stroke. The final important attribute of a good draw shot is finishing the stroke and not pulling back prematurely. If you have trouble with this, you should practice staying down and still after the shot until the cue ball comes back to the tip. You have plenty of time to get out of the way. One approach is to just roll the cue sideways when necessary. Another approach is to just gradually move back when the cue ball starts getting close. If you finish a draw stroke properly, the tip should finish down on the table, and with an open bridge, the cue will often finish up above the bridge support. There is nothing wrong with the cue lift since it doesn't occur until the cue ball is long gone. You don't need to force the follow through. If you accelerate into the ball and stay relaxed, the follow through will happen naturally. Again, don't rush to get the cue out of the way. Don't jerk the cue back like this. Always finish the stroke before you gradually pull back or roll to the side. The best way to develop and improve your draw shot is to practice drills. Here's a good one to start with. Pocket the ball on the side and draw back to scratch in the opposite side. Work on this until you can do it at least five times in a row. If you can pocket five in a row consistently, make the drill harder by moving the object ball farther from the cue ball. And if that's still too easy, pull the cue ball back also. This makes the shot much harder than you might think. Another good drill is F4 in exam one of the Billiard University playing ability exams linked in the video description. The goal is to pocket the object ball and draw the cue ball back into the two by one diamond area shown here. The cue ball starts in the fourth diamond position. Every time you miss a shot, you move the cue ball a diamond closer, which makes the next shot easier. And every time you succeed, you move the cue ball a diamond farther away, making the next shot more challenging. A simplified version of the drill is to try to make five in a row. This drill will be difficult for some of you, but don't get frustrated. Improvement will come over time. I didn't draw that last shot enough, so I still have some work to do. Another useful drill is the three times the angle system good action draw test shot. See the link in the video description for more information. The goal is to pocket the object ball in the side and draw the cue ball above the corner pocket and do this at least five shots in a row. The shot is a 30 degree angle, center to edge, half ball hit. The sentinel balls by the pocket require that you be more accurate with your aiming and prevent you from cheating the pocket too much. If you don't get enough backspin, the cue ball will not head above the corner. And if you have a lot of backspin, but too much speed, the cue ball will draw a lot, but it will take too long to do so, and you will also come up short. Again, try to get to the point where you can draw above the pocket at least five in a row without hitting a sentinel ball. This last shot is close, but it still counts because the cue ball does hit the cushion before the corner. When you can make five in a row, challenge yourself to see how far you can draw up the rail. Here's a baseline shot with no pocket cheat. 
place a marker or coin on the rail to update your progress. Remove the sentinels so you can cheat the pocket. If you cheat the pocket a lot, you can really change the draw angle. Here, I cheat too much, but you can clearly see the effect. The tip position, speed, and aim with pocket cheat are all critical to succeeding on this challenge. Here's a good shot. See how high up the rail you can go. Good luck with all of the drills. They might be frustrating at times, but hard work will pay off eventually. We hope this video helps you improve and master draw shot technique. Now remember, you can't just watch this video, you have to practice these important fundamentals. By the way, the tips in this video not only apply to draw shots, most of them apply to all shots, so always keep them in mind. We'll see you at the next BU Summer School Boot Camp. Thanks for watching!